because, as Senator Obama, for one, has said, and I will quote, if fathers are doing their part, if they're taking their responsibility seriously to be there for their children and set high expectations for them and instill in them a sense of excellence and empathy, then our government should meet them halfway. That is why we are proud of our Responsible Fatherhood programs. That is why we are proud that New York State has the first and only earned income tax credit specific to non-custodial parents who are current on their child support obligations. That is why we are launching new initiatives to ensure that child support obligations for low-income non-custodial parents are fair and reasonable. And that is why we are hosting this landmark conference. As Pope John XXIII observed, it is easier for a father to have children than for children to have a real father. My definition of fa responsible fatherhood is a father being able to participate fully in their child's life, both spiritually, emotionally, and physically. We're very excited. I hope you all are very excited. And I really want to say I'm glad you're all here. You really shouldn't hesitate. Should you feel the need to applaud, you really should go ahead and, and applaud. Don't be tentative about this, all right, because this body of work is going to require us to applaud one another and applaud the people that we're here for and continuously engage in the celebration of this notion of responsible fatherhood. So let's hear the applause again like you really meant it. I am truly delighted to welcome you today and thrilled that all of you are here with us. I also want to welcome you on behalf of my colleague and very good friend, Commissioner Gladys Carrion of the Office of Children and Family Services. This is so important and uh, together the Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance and OCFS have recognized the importance of fathers, uh, of having fathers in the lives of children and really our focus is about improving outcomes for children. of us want you to succeed. Those of us who work in the field of domestic violence response and prevention share a common goal with all of you. We want to see more whole and healthy families. Simply being exposed to violence between one's parents is traumatic to children. It erodes their sense of security in the world, it gives them confusing messages about loving relationships, and it may cause them to model their own behavior after the behavior they're observing. It's talking about responsibility in this program as how to be a better father, how to communicate with the baby's mother, you know, without having to get into some domestic violence or catch a charge. Or there are two basic things your program can do to prevent domestic violence from reducing your achievements, screening and collaboration. New York State has at least one domestic violence organization serving every county in the state, so you do have resources on this issue at your disposal. We also have a statewide 24-hour, seven-day-a-week domestic violence hotline, 1-800-942-6906, which is staffed with trained domestic violence advocates. That's available for victims to call or for you to call if you're looking for local resources for yourself and your clients. It is so important that fatherhood programs and domestic violence programs continue to talk to each other and continue to work together to achieve the best outcomes for families, for women, and for children. I think this fatherhood conference is well needed and it's a long time in coming and it's time that dads got the recognition and men got the recognition that they need to help support their families. I believe it's really important for um, service providers to attend these conferences because a lot of people are afraid to talk about it I think and so it just helps to put everything at the forefront of what we're doing. I run a father's school uh, both uh, in Midtown Manhattan 
as well as inside of a state correctional facility, uh, just teaching fathers um, that it's okay to love their children. It's okay to kiss your son. If, you know, it's okay to um, cry if your child hurts your feelings, and it's okay to be empath empathetic and, and loving and caring. And so, those are some minor ways that um, that I'm really trying to affect change. I grew up without my father, but um, and did uh, made the commitment that so many of the young men that you serve said to themselves, I will never do to my child what my father did to me. And I've just had the privilege of being able to follow through on that and, and the opportunity and the good fortune. Uh, and, and so many men have not. You know, if you've taken the trouble to come to this conference and you heard uh, Dr. Ron Mincy this morning, I am going to assume that you already believe that fatherlessness is a great problem in our society. We talk about the relationship with their child's mother, and other family members, what it means to be a real man, and how that translates into responsible parenting. For many of these young men, this is the first time they've ever had the opportunity to hear from adults about the, just this journey to responsible parenting. So many of them have never had fathers in their lives. And like, it's like when I came to this father program, they enlightened me to a lot of things. Like, um, I can't even put it in words. How much of your lives, every one of you, is a vicarious measure of the success and the happiness of your children. So it's not simply the kids need fathers. Fathers need kids. The absent parent feels inadequate, doesn't know how to communicate, is angry, and all of those things. There's an underlying propeller in our society that's driving these problems at very high levels, and it is this unprecedented separation of men from the lives of their children. We have to be honest with people in terms of the decisions that they are making, because I can tell you, a lot of these folks, they don't have any understanding. They have no clue. They just thinking, I got a kid. They're not even thinking about what it's going to be like for that child when that child is 20. This work is of critical importance today because the health and success of families depend on these fathers. You know, I have three children myself, and I'm involved in their lives, and uh, I think that just saying, you know what, I'm a man, I'm a father, I have challenges, but I'm there for my kids, that goes a long way into what we're doing because they see an example. 35% of the children in the country tonight are going to sleep in a home where their father doesn't live, that more than half are going to spend, uh, of today's children are going to spend at least a significant portion of their childhood apart from their father. I'm going to assume that you know that this trend of father absence is the engine that's driving our other social problems. But it's a fact that there are so dramatically more fathers who are non-custodial parents and who when they don't pay the money say, well, why should I continue to pay the money if I can't see the kids or I can't get involved? And we know how that just stretches the family further and further apart. The question that you have to ask of every person whether it's child, whether it's the father, whether it's the mother. In fact, you have to ask yourself this very question. What am I prepared to do?